have to say I wasn't really looking forward to it. A little bit awkward. Here she is. She's a beauty. What even is that? Delish. Gourmet. Restaurant approved. This is my first time ever making these. What happened, babe? Hello my friends, welcome to a brand new, let's call it a mini series perhaps. A series sounds like a strong word. So you might be thinking, Han, you've done plenty of what I eat in a day videos before, but my friend, this one is a little bit different. So I've decided to start this series where for an entire day, I'm gonna eat the traditional cuisine from different countries around the world. I might need some of your help. I need your suggestions of countries you want me to eat from and also specific foods would be great. I'm definitely thinking America, maybe Germany, possibly China. I think it could be a really fun series. But of course, I had to start with British because I myself am a Brit. So today I'm gonna be eating a very traditional, stereotypical British diet for the entire day. I'm excited about this. I'm excited for this series. If you are too, please do give this video a big thumbs up and feel free to leave suggestions in the comments down below. Which country shall I do next? But anyway, of course, when I woke up this morning, the first thing I had was a cup of tea. I know it's a stereotypical place to start, but it's the truth. I love a cuppa in the morning. Time is ticking now and it is time for breakfast. I'm quite a hungry gal, so today I'm gonna go for my favorite full English breakfast. Right, so the contents of my full English breakfast are sausage, bacon, egg, beans, and a little bit of toast. Some people add cooked tomatoes, cooked mushrooms, possibly even black pudding, which I do not like. I think it is disgusting, but this is my favorite full English breakfast. I guess it's not full English, it's just an English breakfast. Of course, it has to be Heinz. No other beans will do. Okay, we're nearly there. The egg is just cooking. I'm about to put the beans on to heat up and I've got my bread ready to toast. Here we go. It doesn't look anything special, to be honest. I've done too many beans. I'm not actually a lover of beans. I love my bacon crispy. Sausage is a little bit overdone, but better that than undercooked. Obviously, some people would have scrambled egg or poached eggs. I personally like a fried. I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato ketchup and I've also got with it a glass of fresh orange juice. In my opinion, this is the most classic English English British breakfast there is. I've been defeated by the full English. Can confirm it was top notch though. Delish. Gourmet. Restaurant approved. By the way, I would like to point out that I am filming this on the hottest day of the year so far. So you can probably imagine what I thought when I woke up, it was boiling hot and I realized I had to eat a full English breakfast. Have to say I wasn't really looking forward to it, but I am glad I had that earlier. It was delicious. Anyway, it is now lunchtime. I don't feel hungry at all. <laughs> to be honest, I would usually just have like cereal for breakfast or something because I'm way more of a lunch person. But saying that, I actually found lunch the hardest meal to plan for this video because I just didn't know what a traditional British lunch was. Like, what even is that? So after a long think about it, a deep discussion well within in my mind. I came to the conclusion that something I consider very British is a ploughman's and if you don't know what a ploughman's is basically it's like a little platter on usually on some kind of wooden board it usually looks quite aesthetically pleasing they serve it in pubs a lot in the UK and I think it's a very popular lunch option not for me personally I rarely order a ploughman's but I think it's more middle-aged men potentially no offense but for example my dad loves a ploughman's in fact I'm gonna Google the origin of a ploughman's right now. Okay, that's what I thought it was. So it seems like it originates from farm work, hence the name ploughman's, farmers plough in the fields, I guess. It's like a quick, easy lunch. It was very cheap back in the day. It was bread, cheese. They pretty much put foods together that were easily accessible to them. So today I'm gonna to recreate a ploughman's at home for lunch. I'm actually pleased I thought of this. Better than a ham and cheese sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> Hey presto, this is what I think is a traditional ploughman's. Like I said, 
It's not really my choice, but I'm pretty sure this is the kind of thing that you would get if you ordered a Plowman's, give or take a few things. They might not all have the apple. Quite a lot of them have pickled gherkins in a little tub. But for my one, I've got some nice bread, some butter, some cheese and ham. I feel like they're the main parts of a Plowman's. Then we've got some pickle, some pickled onions, a hard boiled egg, apple, a little bit of salad, not very adventurous, but I couldn't be bothered to do any more than that, to be honest with you, and some coleslaw. So I actually think that looks delicious. It looks huge. I have already eaten a full English today, so I'm probably going to share this with my mum, to be honest with you, because there's no way I'm going to be able to eat all of that. I forgot to mention, this cheese is, what's it called? Cranberry. Cranberry, yeah, but what's the actual name for it? Wensleydale? Yes, it is. So this is Wensleydale cheese. It's quite a mild cheese, and it's also got cranberries in it. It is delicious. I just thought that would be a bit nicer, a bit more exciting than some plain old cheddar. Now, children, what do we all think is the most British food ever? Afternoon tea? I think you might be right. There is a world famous kind of argument. Is it scone or scone? Do you put the jam first or the cream first? There are only two right answers, scone and the cream goes first. Let me know in the comments down below, are you team right or wrong? Are you scone or scone? I feel like this is gonna be a breeze to be honest. It's gonna be super quick. I don't know why I said that though because I've never made scones before in my life. Right, step numero uno. Look at this little mountain of flour, how cute. I'm only gonna make four scones today because I am. It's snowing. Then I've got to add the tiniest bit of salt. You don't want it too salty. You don't want the scones or the people in your life to be too salty. And let that be a life lesson, kids. Little bit of baking powder, the magic ingredient that helps me bake. Next up, butter booter. Easy does it. Oh. Now apparently I've got to mix this together with my fingers. I have washed my hands. These are not about to be Corona scones, so never fear. Next step, a little bit of caster sugar to add some sweetness. Right, now I've got to heat up some milk in a little jug in the microwave. I don't know why, don't ask me. Oh, she is ready. Then my friends, to this we add a little bit of vanilla extract. That looks like cough medicine. Lovely. I'm also going to add to that a squeeze of lemon juice. Again, not sure why. Don't know how big a squeeze is either. They haven't specified. <gasps> that was more than a squeeze, I think. Right, then it says mix it quickly with a cutlery knife. Well, talk about pressure. And for my next trick, I feel like I'm playing cooking mama. Let me give it a little bit of this and a little bit of that oh my god they're actually starting to look like scones look wow and then we get a brush and we get a bit of beaten egg and we brush them time for your makeup girls oh what highlighter is that it's almost time for your big night out girls who's ready to rumble good luck girls have a fun night don't talk to any strangers oh girls what's happened to ya was it a bit of a wild one Right, I'll look after you, babes. I'll hold your hair back. <laughs> look at them. They look uncooked on the camera. I can assure you they are cooked. I'm going to let them cool down for a while because I don't want to eat them while they're still hot because I've got strawberry jam and clotted cream. I swear this is like the clotted cream of the UK. It's like the Rolls Royce of clotted cream, I swear. So I don't want them to melt when I put them on. So I'm going to let these cool down for a bit and then I'm going to add these. Look at Janice. What happened, babe? Janice is that one friend on a night out that always takes it too far, isn't she? Oh my good golly, is this not the most British afternoon snack ever? Here she is, she's a beauty. Apologies if it offends you that the jam is on the top. Of course, I've got my second cuppa of the day to go with it. Tea and scones. Mm -mm -mm. Let's do a quick taste test. This is my first time ever making these. Mm, I might start a business. Treats by hand. They are so nice. I've outdone myself. Found a new talent. So it's now about 20 past five and we're having quite an early dinner tonight, but we are on our way to the fish and chip shop. And I just thought to myself, obviously if you're from the UK, you know exactly what a fish and chip shop entails. But if you're not from the UK, you might be thinking like, 
what is it <laughs> basically I don't know so I'm gonna take you along with me and show you the fish and chip shop and basically you just order your fish and chips but they do also sell like chicken nuggets burgers sausages I'm gonna have two medium paddocks yep. one large paddock and two regular chips please okay so I've just got back from the fish and chip shop it's a little bit awkward to film in there because obviously it's not very busy at the minute and everyone's spaced two meters apart so a little bit awkward but I'm back now I've got the goods I mean I don't know if this is what you're expecting <laughs> but here's me fish and chips and if you're British you're probably gonna watch the next clip and think why is she telling us so much detail about her fish and chips but this is for my people that don't live in the UK so I'd say the most common fish from the fish and chip shop is cod but I actually prefer haddock so this is haddock it tastes exactly like cod it's just a a cleaner fish like down in the ocean so yeah I've got haddock and chips obviously the haddock has batter on it so it's got this crispy golden coating absolutely love the batter I could eat just the batter to be honest with you put a little bit of salt on my chips and then some people like salt and vinegar some people don't like salt and vinegar I personally do so I'm gonna put a little bit of vinegar on my chips not gonna drench them but that's good and I also like a bit of tomato ketchup so that is dinner for tonight traditional fish and chips 1000% fish and chips should be eaten out of the paper tray, out of the paper, on the seafront, looking out at the sea after you've had a long day at the beach. But tonight, we're having it a little more civilized, some may say. That fish and chips was scrumptious. I ate it all up. I've got a very full tummy now, full of a very British diet. <laughs> so my loves, that officially brings us to the end of the day, the end of this video. That is everything that I am gonna eat today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget, please let me know in the comments down below which country would you like me to eat from next and if anyone's got any advice on things I can eat from certain countries maybe DM me on Instagram and we can have a little chat about it over there I would be very grateful for any suggestions do subscribe to see my future videos in this series I'm really excited about it I'm excited to do like Japan and China oh my gosh but anyway guys thanks for watching have a lovely week I hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you again soon with another little video bye guys love ya Thank you.